Hello and thanks for checking out my new PCG tool. This facility designer is meant to help with all sorts of game devs to speed up your level design and block out process. This is built to work with just about any game type, like top down and third person game modes, or like this FPS, kind of an enclosed environment that I'm showing here. Along with the level generation, there's some game functionality built in with this set too. Doors can work with locks and keys. There are also hidden breakable walls. Lights are also spawned as actors, so you can add whatever kind of functionality you want to them. I'll go over some of the main features, especially the unique ones for this tool set. If you want a more in-depth look into some of the features and options, there's a link to the features video from my previous tool that has uh, all the same functionality, as well as some text documents included in the pack and a demo level with a ton of notes. The tool works with just about any kind of meshes, materials, and styles you want to use. You're also not restricted to a kind of a boxy shape like this demo mesh. Instead of corner pillars to hide intersections, there's an option to swap out the entire section, the two walls that make up the corner for one solid piece, and you can either bevel that, round it, however you need. The main thing to keep in mind there is that you'll need at least two floor tiles worth of space for those corners, otherwise they'll intersect. The walls and floors also don't have to be perfectly flat, like with this bevel block out set that I've included. The main restriction here is whenever you use one of these door placements, and you get a T-junction with the walls, the more extreme that your, your wall curvature is, the more likely it'll be clipping. Designing your levels with block out sets, like this one shown here and also included in the set, is a really quick way to, to get started. Swapping material palettes and options is also pretty quick. Like the black fade I have right here, you can disable that in the material instance, it's a single parameter, or you can swap out the materials entirely. The lighting and trim here you see running along the wall are totally optional as well. The main idea is just to give you an option to have something that always flows with the wall and follows the same direction, whether you want a pattern trim like this or you know, some kind of drain that's just always along the edge. Same deal again with the ramp and stair meshes. These can look however you like. You don't actually have to have stairs or ramps. It can be all one or the other. The number of layers that you add to your floor is another option. You can have the three that I have here, knock it down to just two or one, keep it simple. Let's look at the demo level and some of the key features on the tool. Whether you're getting started or we just want a reminder, this level's great with notes everywhere and examples of just about every feature. Uh, another reminder is you can mouse over almost every option and get a little tooltip or hint of what it does and how best to use it. And pretty much just three steps to get started. That's to drop the facility designer blueprint into the world, then the uh, path or room blueprint, and then choose a mesh set. If PCG ever gets stuck, it doesn't seem to be updating as you'd expect. Sliding the seed value around like I've been doing off and on in this demo, that's the best way to kind of force it. You can also do the full clean and regen if you need something bigger. The uh, path and room tools have those options as well, but the only time I've ever really needed those is the very first time I placed it. Sometimes you have to force it to generate. There are a couple options here that I'm showing you briefly. They depend entirely on your mesh set. They're totally optional as well. Swapping the corner pillars for the full replacement, or the disable ceiling option is pretty nice when you want to quickly view into your level without having to dive down directly. Let's look at a couple of important notes about door placement. This is intended to both place a door as well as fill in walls anywhere that wall points used to be essentially where a path intersected with a room or another and you wanted to close that off. The doors can be placed next to each other, but keep in mind that the way the PCG looks at it is the size of the box, the width, that you need to cover that space. It will search in essentially a radius based on that size. So if you need a really big wall, like I'm showing over here, you can't have doors too close to that where they'll interfere with each other. So just try to avoid them too close together if the, the boxes need to be that big. I did include some log output too, so you can get a, an idea of why something isn't working. 
And if you don't have this output log window, it's just in the top menu for windows and then down to output log. The other main thing to consider with doors is their door type. By default, they'll just appear as regular door type. You know, it can have a swinging door, some laser gate, whatever visuals you like. But if you uncheck that first option, it'll look for the meshes you've included in the hidden section, which is great for breakable walls, but you can also just use it as kind of a secondary visual option. The other option on regular doors is a key item. You just need to assign it a data asset and have the same kind of matching data asset somewhere in the world that the player can pick up. By default, it'll just automatically unlock, but you can change the functionality however you like. I mentioned this with the style changes, but the other thing to watch for when you're placing one of these door and wall sets is wherever there was a corner, uh, it removes the pillar corner kind of option and essentially just turns it into a simple T-junction. Those meshes basically just intersect, so you want to make sure your wall's got a little extra thickness up front so it doesn't clip through. The room and path editing should be hopefully pretty straightforward, but here's a couple of the features to keep in mind. Width count will give you more tiles. You can change that per path, so you have different widths and have them all intersect each other. One unique note with a single width path is that it gets priority over any other width. So if you want to draw in kind of an overriding path, just let that single path carry over any section you need. Wall light spacing and spawning is all done with the main facility blueprint. But on each path and room, you can adjust the ceiling lights to be unique to that path or room. There's a preview option too, it's pretty handy to see what it will look like beforehand. But yeah, if you need more or less lights on a certain path, or you want a really well lit room, but you want other rooms to be pretty dim, you can adjust these. The light snap option is for paths with an even number of floor tiles on their width. Because by default, it'll snap to one of those tiles, so it'll be kind of off-center. If you enable the snap, then it'll stay straight down the middle of the path. If you haven't worked with Unreal's curves before, the main way to kind of draw out a spline for this is just grab the endpoint, move it where you need, and then Alt-drag it to add another point and extend that out. Just keep doing that and turn as you need. I have seen a bug though where if you alt drag off of the very first point in the line and you know it's the first when it says it's uh, key number zero sometimes it'll reorder the point numbers and that can blow things up so if you see that just try to avoid it and use the add spline point here right click option and if you ever need a path to remain open at the beginning or end there's a couple options for that here it's kind of nice if you're butting two level instances against each other. Here's a quick example I threw together of how you might build two completely separate PCGs. Whether you want a totally different style, different environment, you want to be able to butt them together so there's no load or anything. You would put them each in their own level instance and you place those into a separate map and then you can kind of move them around and snap them together however you need. Just make sure you do your PCG updates and edits within those level instances level directly. Uh, if you try to edit them within the world that they're combined with other level instances, PCG seems to get confused and try to grab everything in the world. The tool tries to snap everything to the primary size of your, your main tiles as well as the stair height. And the uh, general like, horizontal snapping should be pretty straightforward. And just try to make sure everything's right, working at a 90 degree angle. But with stairs or ramps, when you're bringing those up, the, uh, the points will be snapped, but not necessarily the landing. So you will have to adjust that height to make sure it snaps right. Try to always make sure there's room for a landing at both the bottom and the top of any stairs or ramps. Otherwise they might not get the corners on the walls that you want. And now for a quick look at some of the extra features. Now if you have any scatter meshes in your set, you, there's quite a few options for how much and where you want those to be placed. If you ever need a particular spot on the ground to be clear and free of anything just for cutscenes or 
uh, boss fights. This scatter blocker tool will take care of that for you. You just drop it into the world, scale the red box to fit whatever you need, and you're good to go. The other extra tool is this sightline blocker here. It's mainly for top down kind of views like this where you want the background to fade into black or whatever solid color. You just need something to block out certain views. It works very similar to other spline tools where you can grab a point, move it around, or alt drag to add another one. You can change its height also by the parameter on the tool itself, or by scaling each individual point to get varying sizes. And here's the overview map. It includes all of the main meshes as well as a couple blockout sets included. Uh, blueprints are in the back as well. Thanks for checking out this pack and I hope you find it useful. Let me know if you find any bugs or if you want feature requests. There's an email included with the pack.